Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. Moving on to NFL Week 11, putting an awful Week 10 in the mirror. I got crushed last week, but it's in the past. Uh, we got a great game here to start the week off. Bengals on the road in Baltimore to play the Ravens. Baltimore laying three and a half points at home. I am seeing some fours out there, though. Uh, total is now sitting at 46. Let's do it. Welcome to The Source. The Source. Hey, get the sauce. So this line opened at three and a half and it's been sitting at three and a half all week. Cincinnati's starting to look like a pretty public dog here. Action continues to flood in on the Bengals. And like I said, I'm actually seeing some fours pop up, which would appear to be some reverse line movement. So as of right now, you can get Cincinnati plus four, but you can also still get Baltimore minus three and a half. So I'm actually gonna start the video off with some trends. And if you watch this channel, you know, I never start with trends, but these are just crazy. Over the last 10 years, Cincinnati is dead last in win percentage on the road in primetime games. They are 0 and 14 on the road in primetime games in the last 10 years. Coincidentally, in the same time span, the last 10 years, the Baltimore Ravens at home in primetime, 12 and two, which is the best in the NFL. So you have the worst road primetime team in the last 10 years on the road against the best home primetime team in the last 10 years. And it gets deeper. Since 2019, AFC North teams playing a division game on the road in primetime, just two and 10, and the Bengals specifically 0-4 in that spot. Since 2016, AFC North teams traveling within the division on a short week on Thursday Night Football, 0-5. So all those trends pointing heavily towards a Baltimore bet, but get this, since the start of the 2021 season, Joe Burrow, as an underdog of two points or more, is 12-0-1 against the spread. And it gets even more impressive, the Bengals are 10-3 straight up in those games, with four of those wins coming by double digits, including the win at San Francisco two weeks ago. So we got some heavy trends pointing towards Baltimore, and we got a heavy trend pointing towards Cincinnati. Let's take a deeper look. Let's start with some injury reports. Uh, Cincinnati offensively just missing one piece. T. Higgins is going to miss this one. That'll be his second game missed, I believe. I think it's the second. Um, there's a couple more injuries to the depth of the, of the Bengals offense, but for the most part, Cincinnati's offense is completely good to go other than T. Higgins. Some good news for the Cincinnati defense. It looks like Trey Hendrickson is going to play. Uh, there was speculation that he was going to sit this one out, but he's participating in full practice, so it looks like he's going to go. Sam Hubbard, though, he will miss his second straight game, and we saw what that Houston defense did to Cincinnati without him out there. Baltimore offensively, looks like Ronnie Stanley is going to miss this game. I'm not sure if he's been officially ruled out, but it's, it doesn't look like like he's going to play, which is huge because he missed some games earlier in the season. Uh, he came back in week five, and this Ravens offense has looked much better in the last month with him on the field than they did in the first month without him. Also, guard John Simpson is questionable, but he's been participating in full practice, so I'm assuming he's going to play. Baltimore defensively is completely healthy with the exception of Marlon Humphrey. Uh, he got hurt in the Cleveland game, and he hasn't practiced all week, so I think there's a good chance he sits this game out. So let's talk some matchups next, and there's no denying that the Cincinnati passing attack is back through the first four weeks of the season we all know the story 182 passing yards per game 57 percent completions 69 passer rating but in the last five weeks to almost 300 yards per game 74 percent completions and a 107 passer rating it's hard to really describe what went down in the cincinnati houston game last week because everything that happened was just so uncharacteristic joe burrow throwing two key interceptions uh trying to come back in that game joe burrow rarely puts the ball in harm's way late in games and he rarely throws interceptions in the red zone pff charted joe burrow for four turnover worthy plays in that game four entering the game he had five all season and then tyler boyd two terrible drop passes in that game including the potential game winner in the end zone on the last offensive play of the game Tyler Boyd had two total drop passes in the past two seasons combined, and he had two in that game. And then the Houston Texans pass rush, what was that? Joe Burrow was getting swarmed in that game. Thanks to a spreadsheet shared with us by the commission, you probably know him from the live show, uh, Houston registered an insane 42.2 pressure rate against Cincinnati. Their season average is just 25.9%, according to FDN. They're 20th in the NFL in pressure rate. Nothing that happened between the Bengals offense and the Texans defense made any sense in that game. Now, CJ Stroud having a big game throwing the ball in Cincinnati's defense, that I can see. 
that makes sense but on the other side of the ball what the hell was that now you would think that joe burrow should have time in the pocket to throw the ball in this game because raven's pass rush isn't great they're just 16th in pressure rate. but after what we saw from houston last week who's to say baltimore isn't swarming him just like houston was and speaking of uncharacteristic showings can we talk about the raven's pass defense for a second through yo check this out deshaun watson in the first half last week 6 of 20 79 yards four yards per pass attempt one pick and a 22.7 passer rating in the second half deshaun watson 14 of 14 150 yards and a touchdown a perfect 158.3 passer rating apparently all this with a broken shoulder now a positive takeaway for the ravens pass defense would be their collapse in the second half last week that was against deshaun watson a guy who has much better numbers against man coverage ravens run a lot of man they run the eighth highest rate of man coverage in the nfl joe burrow against man is nothing like Deshaun Watson against man. In fact, Joe Burrow against man, 23rd in pass rating, 26 in net yards per attempt. Joe Burrow versus zone coverage, 7th and 7th. And I don't know how much the injury to Marlon Humphrey moves the needle for me. He's definitely good, but I mean, they still have Ronald Darby, Stevens, Rocky Sin, three good corners. And Marlon Humphrey has dealt with injuries for multiple years now. This Baltimore Ravens defense has been elite with him and without him. So, I mean, him being out is a factor, but I don't know how much it really moves the needle for me so what about cincinnati trying to run the ball here uh well the, the Bengals' run game as we know has just been underwhelming this year just 16th in dvoa 20th in adjusted line yards 28th in yards per carry and it certainly doesn't help that joe mixon has had almost zero success trying to run the ball on the ravens uh his last 10 games against baltimore just 52.4 rushing yards per game on 3.4 yards per carry and that's crucial because what we're learning about this baltimore team is if you want to beat them you gotta run the football the Ravens are 3-2 and two in their five home games this year. Their wins were by an average margin of 27 points. So they killed teams in their wins. Uh, in their wins, they're allowing just 61 rushing yards per game on 3.5 yards per carry. In their two losses, though, they're allowing 158 rushing yards per game on 4.46 yards per carry. So the numbers are pretty clear on this. If you're able to run the ball in this Baltimore defense, you've got a shot at beating them. But if you can't, you're going to get smoked. And Cincinnati has just shown us zero capabilities of doing this. As far as situational stats on this side of the ball... Edge goes to Baltimore in both spots. Uh, the Bengals offense 20th and third down, so that needs to be better. They're 10th in the red zone, but Baltimore defensively 10th and third. So edge goes to the Ravens here. Now on the other side of the ball, we'll start with the Cincinnati pass defense, which has been a tough unit to get a feel for. On paper, they're pretty good. 12th in pass defense DVOA, 9th in opponent pass rating, 13th in opponent completion percentage. But it's hard to ignore some of these numbers. I mean, opposing quarterbacks have had no problems getting the ball downfield on this Cincinnati defense. Uh, they're the 30th in yards per pass attempt allowed and 31st in yards per completion allowed. Since Halloween of 2021, the Bengals had not allowed more than five completions of 20 plus yards in a game. That's the second half of 2021 and all of last year. Didn't allow it once. This year, they've given up eight in back-to-back -back games versus Houston and San Francisco, while they allowed five in both the LA game and the Seattle game. This Cincinnati secondary has really struggled to limit plays down the field this year. Now, the good news for the Bengals' defense is those two games where they let up eight, that was against CJ Stroud and Brock Purdy, who are two of the better deep ball throwers in the NFL statistically. Lamar Jackson, as good of a season as he's having, throwing the ball downfield is not really his forte. Um, on the year, on pass attempts that travel 20, uh, 20 plus air yards amongst 37 qualified quarterbacks lamar jackson's 28th in yards per attempt 28th in big time throw percentage 27th in completion percentage 27th in passer rating so despite lamar jackson having an excellent season throwing the ball downfield just really hasn't been his thing what it really comes down to for the cincinnati defense is creating turnovers that's what they've been best at this year they're tied for first in the nfl with two forced turnovers per game the Bengals are five and four this year if you really look at those games if it wasn't for the forced turnovers they could really easily be two and seven right now but good news for the Bengals because as good as the Baltimore offense has been this year, protecting the football has been a problem. They're 17th in giveaways per game and 29th at home. They're averaging 1.8 giveaways per game in their home games this year. But there is a saving grace for the Baltimore passing attack here, and his name is Mark Andrews. Cincinnati has been terrible defending tight ends so far this year. Third most receiving yards per game allowed to tight ends, tied for fourth most receptions per game allowed to tight ends, sixth most yards per reception, yards per reception allowed to tight ends, and third 30th in defensive DVOA against tight ends this year. Mark Andrews should be the key to the Ravens passing attack in this game. But here's the thing. I don't know how badly the Ravens even need to throw
throw the ball in this game because Cincinnati defensively has really struggled against the run. And I mean really struggled. Uh, on the season, they're 29th in run defense DVOA, 28th in adjusted line yards, and 31st in yards per carry. The Bengals just played the Houston Texans, a team that hasn't been able to run the ball on anyone. The Texans have one of the worst rushing attacks in the NFL this year. In their previous eight games before the Bengals game, Houston had an average four yards per carry once not once in the previous eight games. Against the Bengals, they ran the ball 34 times for 188 yards. That's 5.5 yards per carry. And as I mentioned before, Cincinnati's gonna be missing Sam Hubbard on the defensive line for the second straight week. In case you haven't heard, Baltimore's got one of the most dynamic and efficient rushing attacks in the NFL. They're first in rushing DVOA, sixth in adjusted line yards, second in yards per carry as a team. And now you add this kid Mitchell to the mix. I mean, where did he come from? In this last two games against the Browns and Seahawks, two good defenses. He's got 172 yards on 12 carries, 14.3 yards per carry. He had a 39-yard run in there, a 60-yard run, a 32-yard catch. This kid's just a walking big play. Oh, yeah. And then you add in the fact that Lamar Jackson has owned this team on the ground. Through his last eight games against the Bengals, Lamar Jackson is averaging 79.5 rushing yards per game on 6.3 yards per carry. And the Bengals' defense is already struggling to stop quarterbacks on the ground as it is, allowing the fourth most rushing yards per game and yards per carry to quarterbacks this season. As far as situational stats on this side of the ball, shocker, edge goes to the Ravens. Bengals' defense just 26th in third down percentage, 13th in red zone percentage. Ravens offense, 6th and 4th. Before we get to what I'm betting in this game, I do have an underdog pick them here it's a three pick so it pays out six times mark andrews higher than four and a half receptions lamar jackson higher than 43 and a half rush yards joe mixon higher than 54 and a half rush yards if you don't have an underdog fantasy account it's available in any state highlighted on this map so if you're in one of these states head over to the website or download the underdog fantasy app when you make your account make sure you use the promo code bet b-e-t uh, that'll get you a hundred dollar deposit bonus match so you deposit a hundred dollars they will give you a free hundred dollars to play with as far as when i'm betting in this one i mean it feels similar to last week because on paper baltimore minus six and a half was the play uh, but history tells us to always take the dog in these afc north games in cleveland covers it's not quite the same because it's just three and a half instead of six and a half but it's similar personally I'm gonna trust the numbers and take Baltimore. I mean, I don't know how much betting value there is on a side here. So the division battle, Thursday night football, I mean, it can go either way. I could really see this game landing on three and losing this bet by the hook, but I'm gonna take the Ravens. So give me Baltimore minus three and a half. As far as the total, I gotta take the under. I mean, primetime unders, it's getting nuts. I think they're hitting at like 73% or something wild. So give me Ravens minus three and a half, under 46. If you want our top bets for all sports parlays of the day or wanna join our Discord, head over to kylekerms.com. The information is right there on the homepage. Uh, Thursday night, we got an NFL game, an FBS game, couple NBA games, college basketball, uh, a lot of action out here. Remember to bet responsibly and I'll talk to you in the Discord.